The unified multi-axis toolpath really helped finish this Nike part. We used lots of waterline and raster toolpaths to finish in 3 plus 2 as much as we could. The Yazda machine did a great job of matching up in between toolpaths. But again, here I had some faces where I just really needed to make a nice long sweeping motion with a multi-axis style toolpath. So let's take a look at this part here. When finishing the actual wings, these were done in half inch long segments. So basically we started from the tip, we finished a half an inch, we'd rough another half inch, finish it, rough, finish, basically removing material as fast as we're finishing it. That way we keep some material in between the wings as structure. Now, once we reached the bottom of those wings, we ran into a situation where the, the upper back of the part needed to have some sort of a tool path that would blend nicely in between those two wing finish paths. So basically at the end of these two finish tool paths, we went and roughed out the upper back and we were left with this pretty wide area that we needed to apply finish motion to. So what we ended up doing was actually kind of cool. If you take this tool path and run back plot, you have the ability to say, maybe back it up by one pass, turn on restrict drawing, run this pass one more time, and I can take the line that I created here and click save and save this into my level manager as geometry. Doing that to both of these wings, we end up with two lines that look like this. So now we have these two curves that generate the end of one toolpath. We're actually able to use those two curves to propagate the middle toolpath. So if we look at the upper back finishing toolpath, you'll see that the motion here is a perfect blend starting from the final pass of the wing toolpaths. So this toolpath is a unified multi-axis toolpath that uses guide curves. So here you can see our selection for the guide curves is just those two curves. And this creates a morph style motion in between where if we turn on all three of these toolpaths, there is some overlap, but the step overs are exactly the same. So there's really no blend in between these toolpaths. In fact, they use the same exact tool axis control. If I turn on level 102 here, we see two points with a line connecting them. When I'm finishing this wing, we use this point as our tool axis control saying machine from this point. Same thing over here, machine from this point. And when machining the upper back, we blend from one side all the way to the other. So the first pass of this has the same tool axis control as the left wing and the last pass over here has the same tool axis control over there. So this really worked out really nicely. It created a perfect blend in between three toolpaths. The unified multi-axis toolpath also came in really handy when finishing the front of this part. Now, again, this is a mesh file, so we have the ability to create wireframe on any point of this mesh. So what we did was create some drive curves that followed kind of the wrinkle of the, the curvature of the dress here. And by using that as a guide curve in unified multi-axis, we could control the step over in a way that followed the exact contour of that dress. And it really makes the step overs of the toolpath really blend into the profile of the part. In this case, I actually did a clean core style toolpath where I created a unified multi-axis toolpath on this nice, simple, smooth surface. It was basically created with some nice, easy wireframe. And then we compensated that tool up against the actual mesh. So in this case, we're creating our tool axis control motion off of this nice, smooth surface but our tool is being compensated to the actual model. This results in really nice motion and ultimately a really nice surface finish. So the unified multi-axis toolpath on this part was really, really important, did a great job, generates really quickly, and it really loves to work on a mesh. Really unified plus mesh parts is a really, really interesting way to program your parts. It may not be the common workflow for everyone to work on a mesh part, but here it worked really, really well.